Don't say my name. Don't talk to me. I know the Lord says that I got to be forgiven, but not today. And please don't think for one second that I'm going to forget. What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? This is Poetry. I'm coming back to y'all with Greenleaf Recap Review, uh, Strange Bedfellows. So um, I decided that I'm going to start just dropping um, Greenleaf on Friday because I don't even watch it till Thursday. So you get it on Friday, so that's why you're getting it today. Um, if you watch my other reviews, you will have Shots Fired Wednesday night. The day it airs. Underground will be up by Thursday. And then Greenleaf will be up by Friday because all three of those shows show on the same night. So let's get it started. It starts off with uh, Bishop and May. They're at the crib just talking and having a good time. They seem to be back in good standing with one another. You know, last time she was a little bit put off by the fact that he had started the church fire and he tried to reach out and touch her and she was like not really feeling it, but she's feeling better now. And I think she's feeling a lot better because she's there with Charity's baby. She's feeling all the love. She's spending a lot of time with this kid. And um, she mentions that Jacob is preparing to, to move out. He scheduled his move date and... Bishop is like, hey, I'm cool with that. And she was like, I am so upset that you're not upset at the fact that our son moving out. Um, so she wants him to tell Jacob what skanks is all about. Basie, Bassy, Bassy skanks, what he is all about. And who he is really related to. And he said, yeah, okay, I'm going to tell him. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell him. But I'm not going to beg him to stay. I'm just going to let you know that. And so they was trying to get all smooshy, 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 smooshy. And then the baby started crying again. So she stops, you know, that little foreplay session and uh, or intimate session and decides to go check on the baby. And he's like, where the heck is that kid's daddy? <laughs> so then they pan to um, Kevin. He waking up in the hotel room. Yep, there, there's the kid's daddy. He in the hotel room. Um, he got pictures of, of Charity around the room. And he just looking sad and pitiful. That's pretty much what was going on with him. Um, then they go to Sophia and her cousin. Oh, my God. Why well, can't remember the other little girl name? She's so animated. But they go to their, her, and she's talking about trying to push up on the little boy, Isaiah, the one who was singing last week, that song that I said I didn't like, his performance. Yeah, she's trying to push up on him. She's been Facebook or Instagram stalking him, Snapchat stalking him, one of the two. And her cousin, like, if you just don't go and holler at that boy, matter of fact, just send him a message. Just say hi. That's it. You don't need no verbs. Just go and say hi to him. And uh, she like, no, I don't want to do that. Grace comes in. And um, she was like, oh, so you trying to push up on him. She finds it kind of cute. She's like, mama, come on. Are you eavesdropping for real? <laughs> so they, uh, Grace goes to the church. And all of a sudden, Rick Fox walks up. Um, I forgot. Rick Fox is the, he's the reporter. I didn't get to that episode yet in season one because I'm still catching up on it. He's the reporter who was writing the story on her daddy. And um, his name is Darius on the show. I don't know why they keep putting Rick Fox on these shows as like a sexy love interest. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. He is not sexy to me. I don't know. His sad puppy dog eyes don't do nothing for me. And like I have a thing for basketball players. And even when he was playing ball, he was not sexy to me. He's not sexy as an actor. I don't even think he can act, but they got Rick Fox on her, and I guess he's supposed to be trying to push up on Grace. He's asking her out, and she's like, nah, nah, bro, you the one that was writing a story on my dad. He's like, look, this is off the clock, off the record. This is between me and you. And although she's flattered, she still turns him down, and um, she goes into her office, and she sees the little uh, crystal bird on the table, which basically means Big Mama is calling. You better come see what I want. So she goes into the office to go find out, like, what the heck is going on? Why are you leaving this little bird? And her mom was like, look, you know that's so cute. It's better than me just screaming down the hallway for you or leaving a voicemail. So come with it. Come through. So basically, they call her in there to tell her that she needs to fire Carlton. Bishop, like, he, his face is looking like he's not really into that decision. He's not really for it. And um, Grace is like, I can't do that. Um... That's it's wrong, it's immoral. You fire him because he's gay. And May's like, no, we're not firing him because he's gay. We fire him because he's making us we're losing money. Uh, the deacons aren't pledging, the members aren't happy. This is not just about his being gay. We still have the other parishioners that we need to think about. And so she changed the bishop, and Bishop is like, she's like, Okay, Daddy, what you think about this? How no, I think this is fair. 
And he said, well, you know, I can't lose half of my deacon boys over losing one choir director. And so she said, you know, this is wrong. He could sue. I mean, apparently he had sued before. And May's like, he done sued before and he done lost. Both times he done sued. But I have a feeling that this time, if something, if they do fire him, this lawsuit ain't going to go away. And the dude, Darius Rick Fox, is going to have something to do with printing the story. I think that's the way this is may go this time. That's just me if I was writing it. Um, pause. I'm cooking. I don't want to burn my food. Give me a break, y'all. What the hell? Why y'all didn't tell me I look like I got shit down my breast? Pause again. Okay, that's absolutely embarrassing, but I'm not finna record the whole video all over again. I don't know what the hell, where the chocolate came from. I don't eat chocolate. Huh. I did hug somebody earlier. I wonder if they get hit on them and it got on me. I mean, not too long ago, I just hugged somebody. That was... Yeah. Okay. So, um, we go to the over to the Triumph Church. And um, Basie is looking, listening to this young lady uh, rehearse a song. They're all in it. I don't know what it is about it, but I just am not feeling the music. She does not sound good to me. The song does not sound good to me. They don't even seem like they're in rhythm with the music. It just don't sound good to me. It ain't, ain't making me tap my feet. It ain't making me. It ain't. It ain't spiritually move me. Nothing. There are some songs I can hear on the radio or oh, I can hear in church and they will do something to me as long as I've been out of church. I'm a goddamn stuff. You know what? I be trying not to curse on these reviews. I don't know what it is, but I realized I was watching a few other people's reviews. I was thinking I was watching, I think Ashley? And it's somebody else, um, Mike B. I just started watching his channel and all of us saying, we try not to curse. We try not to curse when we do in Greenleaf. I guess it's because it's a, a, a show about the church and it's like kind of disrespectful to curse in church. I kind of what it is. And so it feels kind of weird to be like cursing when you're talking about a show that's talking about church and talking about God. Um, but forgive me if some curse words fly out of my mouth. He knows my heart. Okay. And my mouth. All right. So, dang it, the stove is beeping again. Give me another minute. I'll be back. All right, I am back one more again. Let's get through this review. Oh, recap review. Somebody on another video questioned me too about whether or not I'm doing a recap because it sounds like I'm just like repeating what the a whole episode was about. My titles say recap review. So for those of you who don't know, this is recaps. I tell you what happened in the episode in my own words. I sometimes I even change what the hell they say. But it's all done in my own words, and I throw my opinion in the mix, which makes it a review as well. So, for those of you who didn't know, that's how I run all the reviews that's on my channel. If you um, had an opportunity to look at the playlist, in the playlist, it actually says that in the description. Okay, um, and the fact that I change people's names often, but I usually tell you who I'm changing them to. Okay, right now, the only name that's been changed on here is Max. Sometimes I call him Mac. No, it is Mac. And sometimes I call him Max, but normally he's Uncle Perv. Okay, so there we go. So after we go to the rehearsal, basically Jacob was going to uh, basically to tell him that he uh, was not impressed with the fact that he just kind of like put him on the spot and announced that he had this church without even giving him a heads up that something like that was about to be said. And basically it's still kind of like, mm, really disregarding what he's saying in a cool kind of way um but one thing bishop said earlier was that the guy who died daryl um far as he know he only had two daughters so he don't know where this boy came from so he don't even believe that he really his son so that's one reason why he didn't want to tell jacob the whole thing but he's like far as he know he only had you know two daughters but you know may said it some of y'all men have wayward children they have children outside the marriage, so it's possible. But my thing is, I'm thinking, is he tra He might be transgender, because they don't have children, right? As far as I know, him and his wife. Huh. Hmm. I might be. I might be thinking too hard. I might be thinking too much. Anyway, 
So, um, so, uh, he basically told him, you know, he'll try to give him a heads up or whatever. So he gives him, um, instructions to go to this neighborhood, South Side, I think that was, and, um, go door to door and meet the neighbors and let them know about Triumph too. And he's like, you know, everybody over there on the South Side, go to my daddy's church. He was like, we're not trying to recruit them. We just, you know, trying to let them know that there's other options too. So yeah, go ahead and do that. You do your thing. And Jacob is sitting here looking like, this is not going to end well. It's not going to end well. So then they go back to the church and Charity is singing, y'all. Like compared to the girl we just listened to at the Triumph rehearsal, like I said, it moves me. Charity, she is a whining baby. She is singing. You better go head on, girl. And I was feeling that as much as I, as long as I've been out there, I was feeling it, baby. Go ahead on, girl. And she's sitting there with uh, Jabari, and you could just feel the chemistry. I could feel it through this TV screen. You could feel the chemistry between them. Grace rolls up, and um, I don't know if she peaked game or not, but she looked at him for a minute. And he, they, she get introduced. Charity's like, this is my sister Grace. I did a lot. They, they introduce each other. And um, so she goes on to tell uh, Charity that... Mama trying to get rid of of, of Carlton, and I need your help to stop it. I don't I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think we should let him go. And Charity is like, look, I got a lot of stuff on my plate. Who she think gonna run the choir? And um, she's like, either you or whoever Wanda is gonna run it. And she's like, look, I got too much stuff that got going on. This album, this and other. I'm doing too much as it is. And now you want me to talk to her about this too? And she's like, well, you know, I just think that it'll come from you that it will actually help. I mean, you are the one that hired them, right? You know, so Charity was like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and talk to her and I'm going to see what I can say, see what I can do. And then before Grace walks away, she said, you know what, sis, thanks, big ups for including me in this matter. Because usually matters of the church, Charity ain't even thought about for real. She's like a second thought when they do a matters of the church. So she really appreciated the fact that her sister came to her. And it wasn't sarcasm when she said it. Her sister came in and invited her into the conversation. Um, so, they go back to um, May and the Bishop. They sitting there still going over numbers and papers and, and other people that they trying to uh, pull into different conferences and things of that nature. And the phone rings. They both look at the phone and she's like, here we go. Let's turn the phone over and I'll be damned if it ain't Uncle Perv. Uncle Perv is on the phone, and um, she like, yeah, no, mm-hmm, don't call me no more. I could care less, really. <laughs> it be them type of conversations you have when you really don't want to talk to the person. So she hung up, and Bishop like, who the heck was that? She's like, that's Uncle Perv. And he's like, well, what the heck did he want? She said, oh, daddy died today. Bishop was like, taking her back, and he's like, what you mean? She, she said, well, you know, uh, Uncle Perv could be lying. He just trying to get me to come over there and talk to him. And, you know, no, he probably ain't even telling the truth. Can't believe half the stuff that he say. And he was like, um, well, don't you want to go see for yourself? Just go find out for sure. Because what if he not lying? You know, what, why don't you go over there and um, say whatever else you need to say. Get it off your chest. She said, we, we did that already. When he agreed to not testify against you or on you, that was it. That was our closure right there. We didn't, we didn't, nothing else needs to be said. Um, so they go back to, um, Jacob. He's out there going door, door to door, telling everybody about Triumph, Triumph giving them, I think, t-shirts and mugs. I know he has some mugs in the bag, so he has some little gift bags for everybody he meeting on the spot. He's chasing one brother down and dude is like, Shh, keep moving. He keep it moving. He rolled up on this one sister. She's like, uh... What you doing over here recruiting? He's like, no, I'm just trying to let you know um, that there's other options out there for you. And he was like, you know, we got, we got a, I got a mug for you. She's like, I don't need no dog on mug. <laughs> I forgot what else he said he had, but she's like, I don't need it either. She say, you should be ashamed of your dog on self over here trying to recruit. I am Calvary till I die. Calvary. I'm just like, boy, she was so pissed off at Jacob. She's like, and she basically said, I'm gonna tell your daddy that you're doing it. <laughs> so um they go back now and um <laughs> oh my battery is dying now too 
I'm gonna have to charge my battery and come back again. But my goodness. So then um they go back to Calvary and Charity walks in um and she's trying to uh, have a conversation with May. And May's at the point d popping off her tweets and her hashtags just you know to get stuff popping. She got seventy thousand million. Not 70,000 million. My goodness. 70,000 followers. That's more than I got. I only got 37 followers on my Twitch channel. <laughs> That's all right. I still love my Twitter channel. You can follow me there if you want. It's down in the description. And basically, like, when I'm posting videos, if they're going to be late or what have you, I put them up on my Twitter channel. So, but yeah, but, uh, shoot, Lady May, she got 70,000. Hashtag blessed. <laughs> so, she going to tell her, um, she think it's wrong to fire Carlton and you know is it because he's gay and Lady May is like uh girl it's all about the mighty dollar it ain't got nothing to do with his sexuality it's about money this is a financial decision for the church so Charity is like well dang can't we cut out something else somewhere she's like well we can cut out that fifty thousand dollar producer that you got Charity is like uh, nah pump the brakes on that one he needs to stay. She was like, why? Because, I mean, Kevin can produce your last album. Let him produce it again. She's like, Kevin is not a producer, ma. Legend Barbie gone. Step. Matter of fact, come on. We're going to figure this out. Uh oh, we're going to have to figure something out with Carlton, too. But Jabari ain't going nowhere, baby. Um. <laughs> so, um, by the time she got done, May kept that smile on her face, though. She was like, um, I, just, I just thought I should let you know, baby, that uh, this really ain't even a discussion. And I deeply apologize if for some reason you were led to believe that this is one. Charity is looking like, did she really just tell me I really ain't got no opinion here? That's, uh, that's what she said. Huh. All right, y'all, I'm going to charge my battery up for a few minutes and I'm going to come back. All right. All right. My phone got a little juice, so I can um, try to finish this review. I'm only at 28%, but that's enough for me to get this on done. Okay, so where did I leave off? Um, it picked up with Sophie getting a text from the little boy Isaiah telling her, come on down to Triumph and do the middle of one of his rehearsals. Um, yeah, then they go to Bishop. Bishop was there with Big Daddy Perv. And um, laying hands on him, praying for him. And um, he comes to, uh, and he's like, okay, you know, James, that's you? And he's like, yeah, uh, I got a question for you. Like, did, Dur did uh, Daryl have any sons? I mean, I know he, he had two daughters, but I never knew he had any sons. And while he's asking him this question, Uncle Perry walks in. And um, he basically says to him, you know, hey, don't say my name. Don't talk to me. I know the Lord says that I got to be forgiven, but not today. And please don't think for one second that I'm going to forget. I'm not going to forget anything. So you go here and sit here with your daddy. You sit here and be with your father while you can. Until you have to go answer to our real father. That's what he tell him. So, and I'm thinking, um, so once he leave out the room, then you know, Uncle Perv go by Big Daddy Perv's side, and he, Big Daddy Perv say, I don't want to die. And it's supposed to be a real touching and emotional moment. And Mac is like, um, it's going to be okay, Daddy. It's going to be just like when you were teaching me how to swim. Little cat. My cat is pulling on my umbrella. Stop it. Wait. A Move. Okay, sorry, sorry. He done check move the dog on umbrella. Now my lighting on. Jacked up. So uh Uncle Perv basically telling Big Daddy Perv, you know, don't worry, Daddy. It's gonna be like it was when you taught me how to swim. You threw me in the water, it's gonna be cold, it's gonna be scary. But then you're gonna swim to the other side of the shore. And on the other side of the shore is gonna be waiting our Lord. You're going home to Jesus. And I'm sitting here thinking, yeah, not so much. I'm not I'm not one of them people that believe that. You could repent in your dying breath, and then you all everything is all good. You're going to go on to the pearly gates. I just don't believe that. Um, there's levels to that. 
That's why there's people sleeping on the streets to go. And that's why there's a dog on gate. Because some people ain't going to make it in. And I just think that the people that molest their kids ain't them people. So, okay. So, basically, they go back and um, Charity uh, tells Grace that um, you're going to have to go ahead and fire Carlton. And Grace is like, why? What's going on? She's like, you know, I don't feel like pushing the idea anymore. Don't try to make me. If you want to go on this crusade, you go ahead and go. But I'm not going to do it because I don't even want to. And I'm thinking, well, um, at first I was like, well, dog, Charity, these two men, you claim to be like friends. Like you was really super buddy-buddy with them. But I guess the fact that your husband is playing for their team ah, kind of makes you feel some kind of way. It makes you feel a little bit selfish in this act. Um... So, yeah, she said that she wasn't finna push the idea because she didn't want to do that. So, Grace decides to call her Rick Fox. And I'm thinking, here we go. I just thought, I just said that this journalist going to have something to do with the fact that Carlton is getting fired. And, um, yeah, Grace opens the door to that mess. And it's like, come on, Grace. Between you and May, y'all have such a resentment towards each other. That y'all go to extremes to try to prove the other person wrong or to outdo what the other person wants to do. It's like, y'all so much alike, it's annoying. <laughs> My gosh. Okay, so then they go back to this little, uh, oh, they go back to this little overdramatic boy. The one who was singing last week, singing a song that I couldn't stand, Isaiah. And, um, Sophie and Zora, they walk in. And basically, the whole little scene is that this little boy is trying to push up on Zora. He really wasn't there for Sophie. I guess he called Sophie in to uh, get Zora to come. This whole little, I like him, you like me, teenage thing, it really is not doing nothing for me. It ain't really, uh, I don't even know why they included it. It's, they could have left that out for me. They really have. That and, um... As you can see, I haven't really talked about Kevin at all. But Kevin has pretty much been walking through the whole episode unattached from his family, pretty much. He woke up in that hotel um, without his wife and family. Uh, he goes into the church. People are telling him things about his kid that he should have known. I don't know why Charity is keeping him away from his child. I mean, if you want to end your relationship or separate your relationship from you and your husband, okay, fine and dandy, but why are you keeping him away from his child? I don't get that. But, yeah, so Kevin finds out basically that he really ain't having no place. He goes to his meeting, his, uh, mm, he goes to his meeting, and it's a bunch of couples in there, and they sharing their stories, and they think that they have uh, achieved the goal of what the purpose of that meeting is supposed to be for. And the, the lead person comes up to him and asks him, like, like where's your boo? Why she ain't here at the, at the meeting with you. And Kev is like, you know, that ain't going to ever happen. I don't think that it's going to ever happen. Charity is never going to come to a pray, to gay, pray away to gay <laughs> um, meeting. It's not going to happen. Don't expect to ever see her here. And me personally think these pray away to gay meetings are some BS. I mean, people are who they are. Um, I know a lot of gay people who say they have never committed the sexual act and they do so because of their um, position in church and their, and their belief in God that they have never did the act. Um, I have another family member who, who stopped going to church because of the fact that um, she's gay and I believe the reason that she told me is that she, Based off of what she knows about the Bible, she feels that what she's doing is wrong as well. But it's something that she has not been able to. She doesn't. She she can't stop. I mean, if it's in you, it's in you. That's all I can say. These pray away to gay things ain't gonna work, baby. That ain't gonna work. It's just a mask. It's a mask. Okay, so. The dude basically tell Kevin Kev, um, yeah, go down there and put the foot down with your area. She probably like that. She probably want, wants you to stand up and be a man anyway. So he goes to her and confronts her about the fact that she been leaving him out the loop when it comes to little baby Nathan. 
And, you know, it gets in the way it kind of worked because she kind of did like, okay. And then she invited him to stay. So now he gets to wake up next to his child. Um, he She didn't say he was staying there with her specifically, but at least he wake up next to his child. Um, and they seem pretty happy. They go down memory lane and they'll have some little conversations with each other. And um, then Lady May go, t talks to Bishop again about Jacob. And why he has not told him about Basie. He, she thinks that he should be well informed about Basie before he goes to work for him. And on um, first the bishop is kind of like res resistant to the idea. But he finally like said, okay, fine, I'm going to go do it. So he goes down in the kitchen to talk to, um, to Jacob. And before he even gets it out, Jacob is like, eh, stop. I don't want to hear this. Whatever little conspiracy theories you got about Basie, just keep them to yourself. I'm so tired of you talking about Basie. And he was like, you don't even want me to finish what I got to say. He's like, no, I don't want you to say nothing to me. Let's stop. Like, oh, the one thing I can say about Basie is that at least he is, you know, I guess what did he, what did he say? He true to the word or something like that? He's not a false prophet suggesting that the bishop is. I'm like, hey, for real, that, that's how you see Basie? Okay, whatever. Um, they pretty much go on with like Carissa too. I um I don't like that Carissa's quiet. She's too quiet to me. She's she's absorbing a lot of stuff that she would normally snap back at. Like I said, I still haven't watched the end of season one, so I don't know what changed in her to make her this mild and meek person. Because Carissa was one that's always telling you what's on her mind, telling you what she thought. So she's going to see the house with uh, Tasha. And it's a house that her and Basie used to live in, like, for five years. Little bitty old house in, like, a not-so-good neighborhood. And, um, Chris is not happy. But she's just sucking it up. She's going to eat it. I don't know if she's sucking it up just because Jacob is now in the head of a church or why she's sucking it up. But she's just, like, taking it all. And she's really stroking Jacob's ego, you know. He's crying about the fact that his daddy don't respect him. And she's like, but I respect you, boo. And I'm like... I don't know. This I don't like. I don't know if I like this in the career. I, I I liked her being vocal about how she feel about things. It just seems like this is something that's really changed in her that I'm not really with. Um, but but, but Jacob basically tells her um, since he never respected me, it's time for us to leave. Like it's like I know you don't want to go, but we need to get out of here. And she just she riding for him. She's not gonna complain. She just gonna go 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 with the flow. Um, the next day, May meets with Carlton, and she tell him, um, "Yeah, bro, you gonna get fired. I gotta let you go." And she's still spilling him the little, "It's a financial decision thing." And Carlton like, "No, it ain't. It's all about me being uh, married, a gay marriage. That's all this is about." He said, "But you know what? I'm gonna pray for you. I'm gonna pray for your broken soul, because for some reason you think that my soul is broken." So I'm gonna pray that you get that stuff, get that together. And um, he took it pretty well. He said he took it pretty well, considering um, he knew why he was getting fired. Uh, I don't know if it was just the respect level, because he said that he loved Lady May, so it had to be the respect level that he didn't like really go in. When Grace called up Rick Fox, she pretty much told him what was going down as far as that goes. So I I don't think that this is gonna be good. I don't think it's gonna be good at all. Um, she goes though to the house to talk, talk to Carlton and Reggie, that's Kyle Walker's name. <laughs> she goes to talk to them and Reggie is like, Shh, I ain't trying to hear nothing you got to say. Uh, but she asked them to like, please stay at the church. That's the only way to confront what's going on is to actually stay a member of the church. So I guess they're going to consider staying. I don't know. Cause they, I mean, they didn't get told to leave the church. Um, he just got, he just lost his job as the choir director. So, I don't know, maybe they're going to stay. And But I, just from the previews, it looked like, yeah, it's going to be some drama with this whole issue. Because I think Darius is going to run with that story. Um, Jacob and Carissa get ready to roll out. And, um, Kevin Cab Cab's still there with Charity the next morning. Um, Zora, little brother, they going, and she like, you know, we moving to the hood. I mean, it ain't the hood, hood, but it's the hood. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to holler at you when I get there. So they uh, all load up, and they get in the car, and they about to roll um, roll out the gate. Jacob stops at the gate, and he looks back. Um, but before, like, before they even roll out, though, 
uh, Bishop comes out on the porch and he's looking and Jacob stops like he 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 want his daddy to beg him to stay and Bishop is like peace and for real that's how I feel too I mean I love the idea of the entire family living in the same household I wish I had a family that was that close and bonded that we could all cohabitate together but Jacob, Jacob is acting like can't say the word I want to say he acting like he's acting immature in this situation to me. He being real petty. I would call him a word around with an itch, but this is the the show that I'm not trying to curse on. I don't know. He just bye. That's how I'm feeling like bye. Go do you boo. And that's basically what Bishop was saying to him. Go do you boo. Maybe this will make you grow up for real. Stop whining all the dog on town about everything. So they um they roll out the gate. You know, and I think that's pretty much it. I think that's pretty much the whole episode. If I miss anything, I apologize. Let me know. Um, like I say, just as a reminder, these reviews, recap reviews of Greenleaf will be posted on Fridays. So if you got any um, questions or concerns about this episode, I am actually kind of glad that this wasn't as intense as the opening episode. It was kind of more slower paced. I kind of needed that breather. I, I really did. Especially after watching Shots Fired on Wednesday and the underground behind it. I needed something to whoo, mellow me out just a tad bit. So it was a good episode. It just wasn't as intense as last week and I appreciate that. So, oh, just in case you didn't know, I am about to do a giveaway. Um, in, what's the word with? Conjunction? With my book that I'm not going to mention the, the name of it on this video. But all the information will be um, coming out soon in the upcoming days. I'm going to be giving away a Kindle Fire. A Kindle Fire is basically an ebook reader. Um, but it has Wi-Fi. It's in full color. You have like a thousand apps and games that you can access for free. Um thousands of books and music you can access for free right through the little Kindle fire I'm trying to let it focus yeah so the contest is going to begin on April 1st so be looking out for the contest rules um like I say it's really not with my twisted life but I am CVD and it's with CVD in my book uh you can go to my um my Twitter account at my twisted life life spell l y f on twitter or you can go on my facebook account like i said i'll put all the information in with all the contest rules saying there's no purchase necessary but you may be eligible to win your very own kindle fire tablet it's more than an e-reader it's a tablet so yeah be giving that away soon the contest will run for the entire month of april so be looking out for that Thank y'all for coming back and watching this video. Peace.